let's look at this uh, chart we are today at the beginning right and uh, the end of the period is let's say at the end of one year at the end of one financial year the sales of the company are where it is shown on the sales uh, axis that's where the sales are now the company is continuously losing market share for a variety of reasons and because of that the company projects that if it goes on as it is today then at the end of the year the company sales would be at a lower level right and that's what f0 stands for right that's the sales at the lower level the company has a target that the sales must reach the upper level right which is we are talking about let us say a 10% improvement on the present sales whereas the company projects that if it continues as it does today there would be a 10% decline in sales so this 20% right between f0 and the target is the sales gap now how are we going to bridge uh, this gap one way of bridging it would be to look at the market segments where the company is strong and uh, to try and increase its market share in those segments either by breaking those segments down further refining the understanding of the segments in such a way that product customer aspirations of the product are better met so one way of filling the gap in fact one major way of filling the gap would be by market penetration now what about um, market development here we are saying that um, today the company focuses on certain segments of the market right why not look at some more segments which the company has not touched at all today then sales in those segments would add would add up to bridge this gap so that's market development then you have a product development where um, the company is looks internally and finds that uh, it is in two or three uh, types of that particular product two or three models of that particular product but that product there are let us say 10 models of that product available in the market and the company has not moved to the other seven uh, models so the company can expand its product presence from 3 to 7 right and bridge the uh, sales gap finally the company may decide to use its competences to make a new product altogether right or to address a new market altogether with this new product right so this is diversification now each one of these uh, methods will help the company to fill the sales gap so bridging the gap is the technique of gap analysis this technique forces the company to understand what the gap is and forces the company to think in terms of how that gap could be bridged this is another um, technique uh, which uh, is very very powerful this is the technique of analyzing competitors right um now remember we are looking today at the issue of strategic positioning that is we are looking at the issue of how does the company come up with strategies now one way was 
SWOT analysis technique. Another way was the gap analysis technique. Now, looking at competitors, competitor analysis is another way in which strategies can come up. For instance, um, let's look at uh, the first technique of monitoring uh, competitors, right? Monitoring competitors, see very often companies are blind to competitors. Companies are so focused on their own issues that they are blind to competitors that are coming into the market, that they are aware of long-standing competitors, but they have very little idea about competitors who have newly entered the market. Once you monitor competitors in depth, the next step is to understand the competence of those companies. We are talking about companies uh, who were not present in the market earlier, who were not present in that particular market earlier, right? Therefore, it is quite likely that uh, the company's understanding of that competitor is low. The company does not really understand what is that comp competitor's major strength, right? What is it that drives that competitor? What are the corporate objectives of that competitor, right? Now, understanding these is the next step. And the third step is, having done this, to target the competitor through a strategic measure within the company. So, this is another means by which a company can uh, generate a strategy, right? Look at new competitors, understand these new competitors, and use that understanding to create a strategy to attack that competitor. Now, uh, let's take the instance of uh, a company like uh, Nokia, right? Now, Nokia was the world market leader in uh, mobile phones, mobile handsets. It was the world market leader for uh, a fairly long time. Then, when smartphones came into the market and um, companies like Samsung, who had focused on this, uh, the smartphone segment of the market, when companies such as Samsung entered India, for instance, Nokia in India found its market share going down and customers switching from Nokia to Samsung. Now, Nokia, when it first entered India, uh, let's say 10 years back, 12 years back, uh, for uh, mobile handsets, at that point, uh, it had not considered Samsung as a potential competitor at all because Samsung was not a major presence anywhere in uh, mobile uh, handsets and uh, uh, less so in uh, India. So, Nokia India had no reason to uh, concern itself with Samsung. But, Samsung increased its presence in the uh, Indian market through its emphasis on smartphones. This was a strategic initiative of Samsung, which was missed altogether by Nokia. Ultimately, when uh, Nokia started losing uh, market share in India rapidly, and uh, like in India, in other um, rapidly growing uh, handset markets, when uh, Nokia started losing its uh, market share, it switched. It uh, began to uh, lay uh, increasing internal emphasis on smartphones. So, this strategic move by uh, Nokia was a direct result of its analysis of 
a competitor, Samsung. That's competitor analysis.